<laughs> All right. Good morning to you. We got about uh, 12 minutes to 9 o'clock, and that is exactly enough time for us to talk with Don Pinnell for some riveting radio real estate. Good morning. Good morning, Jeff. How are you? I am well. It's good to see you. Been a little bit. You've been out busy. I've been out busy, yes. Yeah. So I it's like it. good to be back in a kind of a routine. Yeah, for sure. We got a, a house to look at yes. here. Um, you can watch these interviews on ifiber1newsradio.com. We post them on the YouTube and on our Facebook pages uh, after the show here. What we're going to be doing is talking about a uh, property here in a moment and we've got the pictures that go along with that property they'll be on the video so you'll be able to yeah. see exactly what's going on that's great that's that's really a neat feature so i love i love that what are we which one are we talking about here this is a new listing out in uh, the potlatch area okay in fact it's only about oh maybe two minutes from potlatch state park up on the hill nice so it's on the the upland side of the canal so you go up a pretty steep driveway but that means that you got to have a great view once you get up there mm -hmm. it's a it's a manufactured double wide it's 2500 square feet really really nicely laid out it's it's a really pretty layout with lots of windows and uh right out your front door you've got a view of the canal right down the driveway. It's so beautiful. And the two lots down in front of it are also available. So somebody could buy all three, end up with right around five acres, uh, live in the house that's there, clear the two properties down below, improve everybody's view, yeah. and then build two new build two new places that down is, there. That's quite the deal. It is. I thought so, too. I thought so, too. So the house itself with 1.8 acres is listed at 239 okay which i think is a is a pretty good deal for 2500 square feet of house with lots of decks and a three car garage mm -hmm. detached garage that could be shop area all kinds of things uh it, and then it has a really cute little gazebo up there that that uh, needs some clearing uh -huh. around it but once the clearing is done you're up even higher and so you just have a spectacular view you, you have to imagine it right now but but if you cleared some trees away you'd, you'd have a really cool view up there and i can just imagine sitting up there in the summertime and having a cold beverage and it's like and, a decent sized kitchen there mm -hmm, too, the big, nice island and big kitchen and it's got a neat little breakfast nook kind of butler's pantry type area off the side of that that has access out to the decks three car garage three car garage wow yeah yeah and a big master bedroom with french doors and then sliding doors out to the back patio and five piece master's bathroom really really a nice place i i really like it there we'll put the link to this property as well in the show notes on this interview awesome what awesome. are some of the other things that you're working on well i'm uh working on a couple more listings that maybe we'll talk about next time mm -hmm. and then I, I always am looking for buyers that I can take around and, and show places so I've been going out going out on Sunday to show a really neat place out on the water so that's been fun S stuff has been moving really quickly so it's it's kind of a challenge sometimes if somebody's looking for a specific thing sometimes by the time they get around to to writing an offer on it it's already gone yeah and a lot of stuff surprisingly has been selling for cash lately wow even even the higher end places people have been coming in and and buying cash and that's hard to argue with if you get into a bidding war cash usually wins yeah Say, so well, i've got this uh briefcase right here or yeah, you yeah. can wait <laughs> or you can 30 wait. years or however long it takes to get the money from the <laughs> bank or whatever right isn't right. that something it is something i never thought i'd, I'd say that in mason county but but stuff is moving and sure. people are getting into i have i have one couple who has lost out on two or three places now that they get outbid w with somebody who has cash and and <sighs> you can't blame the sellers no but you know it, it makes it frustrating for the folks that are looking for specific so how, properties. what would you do to kind of uh, to if you were not if you were not the cash buyer yeah what was something that you could do to kind of say hey i know that this is very nice looking right right but maybe over here, talk, look to, look at me again. Right, right, yeah. You, you you just have to go through that whole process, and you just it. Sometimes you can. It, you write a letter to the people. Sometimes I, I've had that work. Uh, it can backfire because you don't want to put the seller in a position of looking like they're they're discriminating. Right. So you have to be careful how you word that. But but I've had that work in the past. Um, sometimes you can up the price. You know, you can you can go in at over over list price, and sometimes that works. Um, 
or you can you, you just have to have to play the game mm -hmm. and wow so, yeah that's amazing yeah so i wanted last time when i was here we were talking a little bit about the the financing yeah end of things so i thought today it might be good to kind of go through some numbers people always ask well what it, what are my net proceeds going to be if I'm the seller? So I have some information on that. And if we have time, then the buyers always want to know what their closing costs yeah, are going to be. For sure. So maybe we, if we have time today or maybe next time, we okay. can talk about the buyers. So let's start with the seller's uh, net proceeds. So this is a list of what they can expect to pay if if they offer or if they list their house for a certain amount. And I use 200000 just because it's easy to figure out. Sure. So the first thing you're going to see on there is the commission. And the seller is responsible for paying both the commission to the to the listing agent and to the selling agent. Mm -hmm. So that's the total of six percent that or whatever that you usually see in the contract that the seller signs. Okay. So right off the bat, you've got uh, twelve thousand dollars in commissions on a two hundred thousand dollar sale. Six six thousand to the listing agent, six thousand to the selling agent, and people have to realize that the agent usually doesn't get that whole amount sure there's a split usually or a desk fee or something like that that comes out of that all the advertising comes out of that so it, it sounds like a lot but when you figure you don't you never want to figure out how much you're making per hour right, <laughs> so, right. <laughs> so so i know that sounds like a lot of money but but there's a lot a lot involved in that so the next thing you're going to see are the settlement costs and those are things like the half of the escrow closing fee, the buyer pays half, the seller pays half. So on a $200,000 sale, that's going to be right around $586. And then there's the title policy that the seller pays for. And that is an insurance policy that guarantees that the seller has the legal right to sell the property, basically. Okay. So um, the seller pays that. And on a $200,000 sale, that's going to be about $806. So, uh, and the only time the buyer has to do that is if their lender requires a separate policy that also names the lender as a beneficiary if there is a claim oh, okay. against the against the title. Okay, doesn't happen, but very often, but it does occasionally. So that's why it, it's an insurance policy, yeah. basically. And then the big one that that people often complain about, but there really is nothing we can do about it, is the excise tax. That's like a sales tax that goes to the state. Part of it comes back to the county or the city, depending on where the property is. And so, again, on a $200,000 sale, that's going to be $3,560. Okay. It's a percentage. So um, that's a that's a big chunk, but, again, it's it's like a tax. Yeah. So, And then the other smaller uh, amounts are a document preparation fee of $100, a recording fee of $62. And then I also put in a septic pumping fee for the seller. If the seller is on a septic sure. tank, they are responsible for making sure that the septic is functioning. So that, I put 500, it can be anywhere from 400 to 800, depending on what kind of system you have. Okay. So that's another fee. So bottom line on a $200,000 sale of a house, you're looking at closing costs of 17,600 and some. So that brings your net proceeds down to 182,385. Okay. So so, and I usually tell people to plan on about 10%. So on a $200,000 sale, 20,000. So we're ending up at 17.6. So mm -hmm. it's right around there. And so, and some of these things are going to, going to vary depending on what happens if your septic system and costs a little bit more. Of course, it's going to be up a little, but for ease of figuring, I usually tell people to plan on about 10%. So then does, do people then change their price of the house so they so they say well i want to get out of this two hundred thousand dollars so then they have to list it for 220 right okay and sometimes that works and sometimes, sometimes you shoot yourself in the foot sure. doing that sure. so yeah you just have to but but it's good to be aware yeah. of what those closing costs are going to be so you know not so you don't plan on getting that whole two hundred thousand yeah because you have to pay these other things and again uh, Everything except things like taxes and insurance policies are negotiable. Sure. So you can negotiate the 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 commission fee, you know, those kinds of things. You can, or you can ask that the buyer pay for the septic. That doesn't usually happen, but you can certainly ask. You know. Hmm. So. Okay. Yeah. 
So those are those are the for the seller, and I think probably next time we'll talk about the buyer. Yeah, we got we got about uh, two minutes left here. So yeah, I mean, yeah. just in general, the market in Mason County is still it, looking good. Or? Looking good. Like I said, it, there aren't that many places available. Yeah. Anymore, and things are going quickly. So um, you Does know, stuff starts to slow a little in the fall. People it, kind of are hunkering down, getting ready for winter. Maybe not looking to sell as quickly. Or y yes and no. Some you know the. Things are still selling in the in the winter time, certainly. Yeah. But but not they they generally are not as hot as in the summertime. Mm -hmm. But but it, that's not a reason to not list your house in the winter because things do sell. So um, you know we're always looking for new places to list. Obviously looking for buyers who are interested. Um, it's it's odd that that what seems to be selling the quickest now are the real high end places and then also the under hundred thousand places. Really, those are ending up getting getting uh, a lot of bidders, and I think it's it's folks who want to fix them up and and turn around and resell them, flip them or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So that's been kind of an unusual thing to see. Yeah, so that's kind of what I'm seeing in my the high and the, the low. high and the low. Yeah, yeah. And then and then the middle is it is where we're really looking yeah. for listings because there really aren't that many to choose from. And is that the two hundred thousand range? Right around. Yeah, I I kind of use that as a as a, a middle a middle ground. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. How can people get in contact with you? They can call me at three six zero four nine zero four four nine three, or they can always call the office at four two six three three one nine, and they usually know where I am and how to find me if I'm not in the office. And uh, of course, they can go to my website, uh, Don Pinnell at johnlscott dot com, and or they can uh, they can take a look at me on YouTube. Sure, <laughs> we'll post these videos, of course, uh, right after we get off the show. It's great to see you. Great to see you, Jeff. Have a good weekend. Go Hawks. Go Hawks.